Fraternal greetings. Salamta Tainayas Telling. Salamta Tainayas Telling. Ethiopian peaceful and fraternal greetings. I am Ras Iodonis Tafari. This is Yadin. Ras Iodonis Tafari. Duly elected national president. First unit of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated representing the constitutional membership. So here we'd like just to clarify some of the history concerning the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. There's a lot that's being circulated in social media concerning the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. It's incorporated in 1937, the original organization, right? Still functioning, right? Still operational, right? But yet we are going through, you know, different ebbs and flows in the organization and some of the information that has been disseminated in the public is you know is true but there's the information that is not right and accurate right that is disinformation and it's only with the correct information shall we says know the truth you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free so therefore we need to have the right information and not get caught up in a lot of the the counterintelligence or the disinformation or as his imperial majesty Gurmawi Kadamawi Haile Selassie see you make Zeabi and Nagusa Negesa Ethiopia Moa Anbesa Zeim Negeda Yehuda says this propaganda right that the youths and the young people and this new generation right of we the black people and particularly the pro-Ethiopia ethnic Rastafari people need to have this information right and accurate so there's a couple of points we like to address right here in this short vlog hopefully and one of them is concerning how the EWF we refer to as the EWFI the EWFI more correctly the EWFI Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated so as members and we have been members since the 1990s early 90s right the 1990s and also from time to time we've been duly elected by our fellow members to function as an officer so when we take our pledge not swearing there's no swearing in the organization we take our pledge you know our pledge of membership as well as when we take our oath right of office let's let, let let's let once hear this this is why things need to be done the constitutional way in the spirit of the constitution when we take our admission as new members and we pledge and we repeat with right arm upraise we say i we state our name Ras Iodonis Tafari, for example, solemnly pledged to do all that I can to carry out the aims and objects of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated and to abide by its constitution and bylaws. Then, should we be nominated and should we be duly elected as an officer to represent our fellow members and by our fellow members, According to the bylaws, our oath of office is as follows. Each elected officer shall take the following oath of office before he or she is installed. Repeat with right hand upraised. I, the full name, our government or our so-called legal name, the name that's in effect, right? because we're representing our fellow members. So if ones don't like their, you know, Babylonian or government name, then one can always change their name. But I, Ras Ayadonis Tafari, solemnly pledge to uphold, defend, and protect the Constitution of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated and to perform faithfully the duties of my office to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me exiabi here. No to sip hot. Amen. Amen. Now, just going over that again because it's a very, very important the word, right? That our word be our bond, right? And word is bond. So in giving that pledge of membership and the oath of office, many of us, right, especially as a constitutional membership, take this very, very um, seriously. Right, and as a sacred as a sacred duty, right, before we say God and for God, for Exiavia, the Almighty, the sustainer, and for our people, 
namely we the black people of the world as the preamble of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated Constitution and Bylaws so clearly states established August 25th 1937 so few of the subject matters that we hear here and there in social media different ones you know who have either history ones who are members or ones who may have been officers or who even are officers or claim to be officers we hear different information being circulated in social media so this is definitely something that has reached more and more of the public especially among we the black people of the world so the first thing we need to do is to clarify you know the the info right the info what is the accurate the proper the right and accurate information in order to have correct and proper right intelligence right what's the intelligence so that we are based on our roots right what is the roots the true roots of the organization so I'm gonna call this one right here that EWF came to USA EWF came before EOTC to USA that the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated came to the United States of America over here in this Western Hemisphere the Americas and the Caribbean before my right, before the EOTC the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church came forward over here to this Western Hemisphere to the Americas and the Caribbean and how do we how do we know that that's that's one of the first ones we want to address right here also what was the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church my right, true involvement like from the beginning from all around 1930s namely 1937 right with the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated when did the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church when did it come forward right to the United States of America when did it come forward to the Caribbean to Jamaica and to other isles of the Caribbean right also concerning the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated EWFI the EWF the Constitution what's the Constitution history was the Constitution given to us right by his Imperial Majesty right or did we receive right the Constitution a different way what's the real history of that because we hear a lot of disinformation that is being put out what was the role of the church by right? the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawato's church with the Constitution and bylaws what is the true history and also the black American role right that has been sorely suppressed depressed and also even just totally marginalized and avoided what's the true history who were the founders were they Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church members the founders right we know they were black people but on that particular subject matter we need to look at the history so hopefully in a short series of vlogs and videos we're going to seek to address and also present the information to the public because much of the disinformation is going out there into the public so it's important to establish the true the proper the verifiable right trust and verify what we're about to say here and what we are saying right here 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 so concerning the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated let's first of all begin with one of our first witnesses right our first witness here going through some of the historical pics right here 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 so here here in this particular this is a book uh, that we had published a couple of years ago actually it was a compilation of information that was in circulation and as we sought to vet the information that was in circulation and find the most right and accurate information we compiled it we published this particular small book you know um several years ago right about 10 or so years ago what you see on the screen right there in the royal amharic is mel a ku mel a ku mel a ku right in the amharic the royal amharic and that is for the name of our founder and loving and fraternal memory of dr malaku emmanuel bayan 
special emissary to black America circa 1937 AD. Now, Dr. Milan Kubayan, he graduated from Howard University as the first Ethiopian medical doctor in the United States. He co-founded the Ethiopian Research Council and the Ethiopian World Federation while raising money and recruiting African or black American experts to help develop Ethiopia. Black American experts primarily and other um, black people here in the Western Hemisphere to help and to assist to develop Ethiopia. Now, here, 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 let's first of all just read the preamble of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. The preamble, now this is taken from the first oracle or word in the Constitution and Bylaws, the preamble to the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated Constitution and Bylaws, and it reads, we, the black people of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination, to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. So that's the preamble. That's the preamble right there. Now, when we speak about the history, this is important to touch on the history, right? What is the history, the true history of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated? Now, the true history of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated is that this organization, it came into being on August 25th, 1937 in New York City through the efforts of black Americans who sent a delegation consisting of three prominent Harlem figures, all leaders of black organization known as the United Aid for Ethiopia. So these three, and interesting, the Trinity, these three prominent Harlem figures, right, these black Americans, right, we say Ethiopians, right, abroad, Ethiopia at home and abroad, they were all leaders of the black organization known as the United Aid for Ethiopia. Who are these three? And why don't we hear their names mentioned more since this is the origin, this is the founding of this organization that historically right, fulfilled right, the initial part of its mission right, to save Ethiopia, right? Reverend William Lloyd Imes, pastor of the prestigious St. James Presbyterian Church. Philip M. Savori of the Victory Insurance Company and co-owner of the New York Amsterdam News. And Mr. Cyril M. Philip, secretary of the United Aid, the United Aid for Ethiopia. They all sailed, the three of them, sailed to England in the summer of 1936 to speak with His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, concerning financial matters. In response, the Emperor, or Nagusa Neges, the King of Kings, empowered his personal physician, Dr. Malaku E. Bayan, as his special emissary in order to officially Established the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated in 1936-1937. And as we have shared already, that the main purpose was succinctly set out in the following preamble. We, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Now, as we go forward and further, right, we also get to the history of well, how the constitution was established. Was the constitution, as some say, given by his imperial majesty, or did his imperial majesty authorize, right, in his authority, he's in the authority, all these works were done because those three black Americans sailed forward, right, and got permission and conferred with Nagusa Negeza, Ethiopia, with Katamawi Haile Selassie, and received permission, right? So 
after his match, he gave permission and sent his personal physician, Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. Right? That is the root of the sovereignty. Right? We talk about our sovereignty under the sovereign. Right? In his times, he shall reveal. Right? In his times, he shall reveal who is the only potentate. Right? The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Here, 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 and Degana and Degana again. In his times from Timothy, right, in the New Testament, he shall shew who is the blessed appearing of our Lord, get touching Jesus Christus. In his times he shall shew, in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and the only potentent, right, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, yes, I, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah have prevailed, right? To open the book, right? The root of David, to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So here, 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 this is just the foundation right here of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. We could say the role of the black American, right? The black American in the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Right, and at that point of studying the history, we can see that the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church overtly played no particular role within that. What do we mean by that? Well, the next witness right here, right, as we speak about how the EWF, right, came before, right, came before the EOTC, right, to the U USA and to the Western Hemisphere how the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. The next witness is Archbishop, Archbishop Yitzhak, Archbishop Yitzhak, who was sent to the West by Gurmawi Gurmawi Hala Selassie, right, to give us that, you know, the, the, the spiritual, right, the true faith, right, the faith of the King of Kings, right, speak about the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, so as we now here speak about the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, we have to look at this particular book right here. But first, let's refer to the man, right? His Eminence, Archbishop Yitzhak. Bitsu'e Abuna Yitzhak, right? Archbishop Yitzhak, right? His Eminence, right? This is the book we're speaking about right here, right? This is the particular book right here, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. Now, note this right here, that the one whom his majesty sent, right, speaking of Archbishop Yitzhak, notice that on his book, the title is called The Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. Note that it doesn't say the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, but the emphasis is on the Tawahedo, right, the Tawahedo Church. Okay, that's for another, right, we have some slides here, but this is for this presentation right here. So we can see very, very clearly right here, Right, that we have, let's bring up the book cover right here so one can see the book cover, you know, loud and clear. Now we have this actual book right here in hand, and here we'd like to go to chapter 8. We're in chapter 8, right? Chapter 8 of the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church. See, because Tawahedo explains what type of orthodox or orthodoxy we are speaking of. So the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, more of the true name of the church and more ancient name, ancient name, the Ethiopian Tawahedo, because Tawahedo explains what we mean by orthodox. The subtitle is an integrally African church. You see that right there? Let's just zoom in right there. An integrally African church. All right. So here, let's go to page, we're on page 191 of the said book. It's chapter 8, and this chapter is the Ethiopian church in the United States and Canada, right? So this chapter is chapter 8 of the Ethiopian Tawahedo church, an integrally African church. Chapter 8 is the Ethiopian church in the United States and Canada. And first section, subtitle says New York. The establishment of the church here was the result of the Ethiopian World Federation, which was established by Dr. Malaku Bayin, 
1937, during the occupation of Ethiopia by Mussolini. That's the first line right there. We could say Selah, Selah, we say Selah right here, Selah on this point. This is from and written by Archbishop Yitzhak. This particular book right here, written by Archbishop Yitzhak, the one whom His Imperial Majesty sent. Now let's note this here. His Majesty first sent Dr. Malaku, right, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Bayan. Malaku mean his angel, Emmanuel mean God is with us. Bayan, Bayan in the Royal Amharic has the meaning of like a, 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 a judicial, like a, a sentence of a judge, like a decision. It's almost like the decision of a judge, explaining, you could say, a judgment or a decision. But look at that name, the prophecy, right, and the revelation in that name. Weep not, behold, right, Dr. Malaku, his angel, right, his angel. Remember the Israelites in the wilderness? Jehovah said he would send his angel before them. Remember Malachi, his angel. And then we have Emmanuel, right, Emmanuel, 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 El, the Almighty, Hail, like you say, Hail, the power, the Almighty, El, Hail, Emmanuel, that El, the Almighty, the power, the Almighty power is with us. So his Imperial Majesty, Kedemawe Hala Selassie, Moa An Besa Zem Negeta Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Negusa Neges Ze Ethiopia, the King of Kings of Ethiopia, Siyume Geziawi, the elect of God, sent Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, right? Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Then we have, after that, we have Archbishop. Betsue Abuna Yisahak being sent. And here, Archbishop Yisahak, here he writes, here in this particular document right here, right? In this particular document right here, called the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, in chapter 8, get a copy, right? Get a copy in this particular vlog right here, because of the urgency to address a lot of the disinformation. Right? There's too much disinformation to address and to correct the misinformation, both the misinformation and the disinformation that's being circulated. Now, as far as the reasons, uh, we don't know. We, we're not going to say this or that one, even if they are disseminating mis and disinformation. Right? We don't know whether they have received you know, mis or disinformation. What we're doing here is pointing to the evidence. Right, the evidence for the factual, the true, and the proper information concerning the history, the chronology of this root. These are roots for us right here. Right? If we speak about the Ethiopian World Federation incorporating, we say there's there's problems or things are not functioning as they should be. Right? A people without the knowledge of their roots, a knowledge of their history, and if we don't have the true knowledge. If there's disinformation and misinformation, that no doubt is one of the major, right, you say problems, one of the major stumbling blocks. And much of the information I'm presenting right here in this particular vlog, we have presented to others who are, we could say, more on the inside of the organization, right? Even if ones are on different sides, but on the inside of the organization, some have accepted it, but still there are some who recognize that what we're saying here is right and accurate, right? And instead of putting forth this information and correcting and upgrading the disinformation, the misinformation out there, there's some ones and ones have gone on for years, right? Believing the misinformation and the disinformation, right? We could say almost, in a sense, innocently on the level of they did not know, as it says in Hat Torah and Orit, right? When one has been informed, my, that they have erred or gone off or so-called sin or missed the mark or is lacking, right? That's when they come into that guilt. In other words, that responsibility to make correction, to make amendments. It says, he who cover up his sin, his uckery, his you know what I mean? Shall not, right, shall not prosper. But he who confesses, right, and forsakes and leaves them will be shown mercy. So, to the fellow members, right, even if we are on so-called different sides of certain important subject matters in this organization, please take heed. Take heed to what we share right here. We need to correct these things because some of this information and misinformation, we know that ones and ones, they, it's kind of like it's been passed on. 
and maybe it's like the thing what we talk about with Rastafari, right? Rastafari does not mean head creator, right? We had proclaimed that and was teaching and showing that, you know, early in this so-called new millennium, even before the new millennium, talking about before the 2000s, right? And now we happily seeing that ones and ones are doing their own you know check and verification and know it's true and we're making these upgrades now with those who said head creator instead of the head to be reverenced the head to be respected or self-respect you know what i mean that's grandfathered in that's part that we can't change the history on that right but even if some of the elders or ones before right they didn't have the access to the the knowledge and the information Right? It says, they go to and fro, knowledge shall be increased. So knowledge is increasing. We can verify things. So when one say, well, it's the Ethiopian Orthodox Church that is the head of the EWF, this is not correct. It's not correct according to the ordinance right, of His Imperial Majesty. But yet, the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church has a very important role right, within our divine heritage. Right? And how do we know this? This very book right here. Because we're going back to first, His Majesty sending who? Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. Facts. 1937. He was already here in the Americas, married a black American, one of the daughters of Yehuda over here, even before that time. Went to Howard University, right? First Ethiopian, you know, to, to graduate as a medical professional, a doctor. But here, let's touch on what Archbishop Yitzhak Wright. He testifies in this book, and this is why this book is so hard to get. This book, we spoke about this in other videos over the years. You know, we saw this book, some people are trying to resell this book for hundreds of dollars. One place, 700. One place, almost 900. Uh, next place, over a thousand dollars. This particular document here, that's, there's a whole different internal strife within the church after the godless and creeping coup after rebellion against the king of kings in 1975 there's a whole other story right a whole other history concerning certain things that were going on in the ethiopian orthodox Tawaido church that's not what we are seeking to speak about right here but even if you get this particular book or can access it we're seeking to get some pdfs of this so that at least ones and ones will have an opportunity you know, to read through, you know, a soft copy and hopefully we can work together to gather and get some hard copies of this book, right? Because this book is very, very important, especially we'll say for every Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated member, right? Um, and especially for even every Rastafari, whether they are, you know, members or they are not members. This is important for any of us who are pro Haile Selassie, pro-Ethiopia, right? And therefore, those things that His Majesty are for, we should be for. But we can only be for, right, if we know the truth, right? We got to have the right and accurate information. So what does Archbishop Yitzhak say? And this is just the first part of it, right? In fact, this particular page right here, okay, let's, let's just read through this right here. And later on, we'll take some snapshots and maybe do another vid just to show and prove in case anyone will seek to doubt this. Because many ones have doubted this, you know, until we took some snapshots. We couldn't find it for this video right here. But we have the book. Anyone who has the book, go to page 191. And this book was originally published. Let's go to when it was originally published here. All right. This book was originally published. It should have a publication date on it. Right, because we have a uh, this copy here, and some copies I think were like reprinted. It doesn't have the date in this one right here. It's the same one that you see on the screen right here. But we know this goes back to, if I'm correct, sometime in the 90s, maybe late 80s. But I definitely came across it in the early 90s, right? Late 80s or early 90s, the approximate time of this particular book. We have a hard copy. We'll check out the hard copy, right? This one that you see on the screen is the soft copy that we have a copy of right here, right? The third edition on the back of the book, the third edition, it says here, May 1st, 2005. This is roughly around the time that Archbishop Yitzhak had passed away. God bless his soul. Rest in peace, rise in glory, Archbishop. Yes, I, Rastafari. So here, he writes in chapter 8, the Ethiopian church in the United States and Canada. Here, this says New York. 
the establishment of the church. And when we speak about the church, we're about the Ethiopian Tawaiido Church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawaiido Church. Here was the result, was the what? The result of the Ethiopian World Federation. So it was not the other way around as the disinformers right, are putting out the disinformation. It wasn't that the Ethiopian Orthodox Church was set, sent first and then through the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, then the Ethiopian World Federation was established. It did not happen that way. It did not happen that way. One is bearing false witness on the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church. One is bearing false witness against Archbishop Yitzhak by saying that, and against the Ethiopian World Federation, against Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bay, and most of all against the work of Ketamawi Haile Selassie. So let's get our facts right and accurate. Chapter 8, the Ethiopian Church in the United States and Canada. The establishment of the church here was a result of the Ethiopian World Federation, which was established by Dr. Malaku Bayin in 1937 during the occupation of Ethiopia by Mussolini. Archbishop Yitzhak goes on to write, the aim of the Federation was to promote unity and solidarity and to teach the history of Africa among all black people. And it was helpful in the introduction of the history of Ethiopia to its members. Although it was a political organization, the Federation became a source of inspiration and a route for the advent of this ancient Christian church in the Western Hemisphere. Which ancient Christian church? This ancient Christian church. Let me just read that last part right there, there, there. He says, um, last line here in the first paragraph, although it was a political organization, which is not constitutionally accurate, but it does have something in the, I know some ones and ones who are members, they might point to that there. So for all to hear this right here, because it says that, you know, um, to keep before, you know, you know, to keep before the public the aims and objects. And part of the aims and objects here, which is Article 1 of the Constitution, Section 7, says that the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, it says nonpartisan character. The Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated shall be nonpartisan and nonpolitical in character. But in cases where partisan, political, or other issues tend to affect the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated adversely, in the carrying out of its aims and objects, it shall be free to combat such issues with the best legal means at its disposal. So that's just from the Constitution, but overstanding what Archbishop Yitzhak is referring to, because on a certain level that can be interpreted, you know, the rallying, solidarity, support, demonstration, other things the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated did on behalf of Ethiopia, right, could be interpreted as political. But going on, Archbishop Yitzhak says that the Federation became a source of inspiration and a root, a root, like a pathway, a root, a way, right? Yehim, men know, and this is the way, a root for the advent, the advent. You know, we speak about the first advent, the second advent here. He writes, a root for the advent of this ancient Christian church in the Western Hemisphere. Second paragraph right here, just to get a little more context, right? The several years, he says, several years before the official establishment of the church in the United States. Several years before the official establishment of the church in the United States, constant contact was kept between the interested group and the mother church in Ethiopia. So there was an interested group over here in the Americas. Right? There's an interested group over here, and this interested group over here in the Americas, and let's point to this right here, let's go to this one right here, connected with the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, right? right? The interested group here in the Americas, right? He says, His Holiness Abuna Basilios, the late patriarch of Ethiopia before and after he ascended the spiritual throne of the church corresponded with certain members of the group led by Father John Divine Hickerson, an American who was not officially ordained 
but was a pro-African. He was a man of vision who was responsible for the coming of the church to the West. So why is not his name mentioned? Father John Divine. Father who? John Divine. I know there was a Father Father Divine. I'm not too sure if this is the same Father Divine, but here Father John Divine Hinkerson. Right? It says right here, ultimately, a promise was made by the authorities in Ethiopia to officially set up the church in the United States at the opportune time. At the opportune time. So when we're speaking about the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, when we're speaking about the the Orthodox Church, especially speaking about, let's bring this up right here, here, here. All right, let's go on. Father Gabra Jesus Meshesha, Gabra Jesus Meshesha, or Abuna Athanasius and Ato Abra Jembere were sent to the group in 1952. Okay, so they were sent to the group when? in 1952 right being sent to the group in 1952 and all this is from this particular document here sent to the group in 19 and when was the ethiopian world federation incorporated established here in the western hemisphere in the americas and for the caribbean right it was established in 1937 by who we the black people of the world who were the we could say the founding father so to speak from over here it was those three black americans why aren't they mentioned all right you know we, we, we still have no tribalism here we have to get off of how the babylon the british and the americans have sought to divide and conquer us no more of that yankee yardy nonsense you know but we have to look at you know what is the true facts right and we should glory in it because it's we the black people of the world Right, Ethiopians at home and abroad. So here, Father Gebre Jesus uh, Meshesha, Abuna Athanasius, and Ato Abra Jembere were sent to the group, that interested group here. And that group came out of, we could say, and was a part of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated in 1952 with articles, with what? With articles for the church and sacrament books for the members. So they brought forward articles for the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawado Church and sacrament books for the, for the members. Then in 1954, so this is the true history here, when we spell what's the true history of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, right? And who's who? So who is saying these things right here and wrote these things in the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church is Archbishop Yitzhak. He says, then in 1954, Archbishop Theophilos, 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 1954, Archbishop Theophilos visited the United States to reassure members that the promise would be kept. So there was a promise from Ethiopia. And no doubt this is the Ye and Amen of Kadamawi Hala Selassie, right? That was being fulfilled. And yet it was not fulfilled all at one time. So this is where we have to have patience. Right, you know, patience, the faith of the saints, patience. Right, so in 1954, Archbishop Theophilos visited the United States to reassure members that the promise would be kept, that the church would be set up, and that he himself would return. That he himself would return. There's something here that is that, that is so fresh with the early church. Right, and with the first followers of the Messiah, of Geta Yesus, of the Moshiach, Yeshu, of Robeno. It's very interesting because the same thing, that, that promise of that return, that promise of it being set up, that promise of the establishment. Now, the great day finally arrived. When was the day? When was this great day? This is, this is historical here, right? In order to know when did the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, a.k.a. the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, come to America, and what was the relationship or involvement vis-a-vis -vis the EWF? This is why we say that the EWF right, came to USA before the EOTC, it, that, that the Ethiopian World Federation, it came before the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church to America. And here is the testimony, and here is the reliable, we could say, witness, right? And his, we could say, his testament. 
that the great day finally arrived on October 25th. When? October 20th. Isn't this interesting? We have August 25th, right, for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, 1937, right? So there's only one. There, there should be only one, especially here, when we're speaking about here and these here Americas and any other local anywhere. Ones can just go and incorporate their own organization. That's a shell company. That is against the Constitution and bylaws. And this is one of the reasons why the constitutional membership, right, have not engaged right with others because they are operating unconstitutionally we have to get these basic facts and some of these unconstitutional ones are working on the misinfo or the disinfo now it's time to decide whether that misinfo or that disinformation that improper information was given to them and they are not a part of that because if they're not a part of that they should go check verify and when you see that this is right and accurate right you should put away the lies and the folly see and this is this is how we can we talk about reconciliation this is the rec rec reconciling in truth right in truth not in lies you know not in lies it's better to tell the truth right and to lose right than to tell lies and win but some want to go on telling lies and think they win if you tell lies and you temporarily win as some of the liars over the years have so, see, seemed to win temporarily, the lies come back. And this is what's happening in social media. There's, there's, there's some true information, right? But there is also false information, right? And to keep the good over the evil, we need to put out the true information, put forward the true information, we need to proclaim and verify the true information. This is how, according to the Constitution, the aims and objects we had to correct abuses there have been abuses going on because of this info right we're looking at as this info we're not even trying to finger point any one and one you know individual other members regardless of whatever we might disagree upon you know whatever causes we may have until we first put on the table before all the members right and also this public information before the public right so that ones can sort this so on October 25th, so we have August 25th, and here we have October 25th. But August 25th was 1937, right? That's the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated in the United States, right? Canada, right? Over here in this Western Hemisphere. And then we have the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawaito Church coming forward because of that interest that the group, what he speaks about right here, that there was a group, right? There was an interested group, right, within the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, because this is what it's all about. He's saying, how did the Ethiopian church come to the United States, the Americas, and Canada, and the Western Hemisphere? And he says on October 25th, 1959. So the date for the establishment of the EWFI, my Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, was 1937, August 25th. And for the Ethiopian Tawaito Church, the Ethiopian church was October 25th, 1959. It says, His Holiness, then His Grace, Abuna Theophilos, Archbishop of Hara Province, and Assistant Patriarch of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, officially set up the church in the United States. So the official establishment of the Ethiopian Tawahedo Church, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, was in October 25th, 1959. Do the math on that. So ones and ones need to, you know, want to know the difference in years, right? How many years difference? What we count right there, let's see, just do a, do a rough count. We have 1940 to 50, so we have 19 years, 19, 20, 21, 22 years. This is significant, right? Ethiopian, Hebrew, royal order, right? The 22 letters. Right, the Ha Aleph to Ha Tawe, the Aleph and the Tav, then the Hebrew that comes down in the translation is the Alpha and Omega, the first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet of the Holy Alphabet, 22 letters, the Abu Gida He Wizo, and so we get the Abu Gida Ethiopically from the Hebrew. So we have 22. So it's 22 years, if we're correct with the mathematics, 1937 to 1954, I, no, no, 1959. You know, 
pardon I, 1959. So 1937, EWFI, Ethiopian Wealth Federation Incorporated, and in 1959, right? If our math is correct, we have 22 years. So a 22-year difference. He goes on and he writes, on that same day, what same day? October 25th, 1959. Some 275 converts were baptized by him. His Grace Archbishop Y. Samuel of the Syrian Orthodox Church was spiritual advisor. Was spiritual advisor. Now he goes into a lot of other important details. Right? There's a lot of very important details here. This is, this is the primary right information we like to go into other details right here but it goes beyond the scope right of this particular vlog right here now when was the church established right when was the church established what's interesting is that in 1952 the ethiopian orthodox church was established in trinidad and tobago by reverend abba gebra yesus meshesha and Anto abra jambere Right? Since the late 1940s and early 1950s, there had existed a vibrant local organization called the African Nationalist Movement, led by its president, the late David Modesta, and his assistant and organizer, Garnet Springer. Both leaders were later ordained deacons in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. So in Trinidad and Tobago, the church was even established before it was here in the United States in 1952. Yet, the church as a whole in the Western Hemisphere came after the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Now, as we go through this right here, let's just touch on Jamaica, right? In 1951, I think 1951, Guyana. Guyana was 1951. And we have over here in Jamaica, right, in Jamaica. Now, he goes to the history of Jamaica here, gives a very good write-up on Jamaica and different movements in Jamaica. This is a very well-written book. Let me just say this. We, we've been trying to emphasize this over the years. And the difficulty is that when ones try to get it, they might not be able to easily find it. So to those of us who know how important this book is, let's work together on doing some reprints of this book. We have certain ability to do that, but like to work with others, you know, and heal up to ones like, you know, um, the, I think the Archbishop uh, Yitzhak, I think there's a community group on the, on the YouTubes, also to the brother um, Zacharias, you know, like to heal up Kinfa Mikael, you know, and the other brethren as well, you know, who know and are been more, I can say, intimate with the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawadu Church, both here in the Americas as well as the Caribbean, even after that time, right? But this is the early history that we all should share in common because the true history. Now, Jamaica, right, when it was established in Jamaica, right, we have the first visit, right, right here. Let's go through this here. The first visit to establish a church in Jamaica. So he write, he has a good write-up on Jamaica, but he says um, when they first went 1970, we see 1970 here, right? So it seems as though the establishment of the church in Jamaica, right, kind of came afterwards, right? Because here there was a second visit, there was back and forth visits, right, to Jamaica, and I think about four visits. I'm going through this article right here. Um, let's see was written thousands of members bedecked themselves but it was later on yeah he's well he goes through many of his visits right his visits to the jamaica right but we have the later coming to like the 70s right according to what yitzhak writes right here he goes into a very detailed history which is good for all of us so we can know one another but he writes here about 19 you know 1970 um, saying left, we left New York on uh, May 14th, 1970 at 11 a.m. and arrived in Jamaica at 3 p.m. the same day, right? The same day. And it seems to be at this, we also visited, when he reached Jamaica, 
Archbishop Yitzhak, he said he visited several branches of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated and the Haile Selassie I Junior Secondary School, right? And he was invited to deliver an address at the United Presbyterian Church. Remember the Presbyterian Church? One of the founders, right, early on, right? William Lloyd Imes, you know? Presbyterian, St. James Presbyterian. So here in Jamaica, Archbishop Yitzhak was invited to address, to make an, deliver an address at the United Presbyterian Church and the United Theological College of the West Indies, of which Reverend John Hode was the president, right? So we get this involvement here, right? And we can say that from the 70s moving forward, we see a more and more establishment of the church. But it's interesting looking at the history that he testifies to. He actually goes through the testimony, right, of the different areas, right, and when the church was established in different parts of the um, diaspora, you know, at what time the church was established in different parts of the diaspora. And he also has a very good at length and detailed reasoning on Rastafari. And I've heard one say a lot of things about the church, about Archbishop Yitzhak and Rastafari, but it's interesting and of importance to read what he says himself. Oh, the church was established in Canada, July 23rd, 1972. Let's just point that out. In Canada, right? The first parish in California in February 27th, 1973. So we need to actually get the history of the establishment of the church according to, you know, the one who was sent over here for us by his imperial majesty. You know, speaking of Archbishop, the late Archbishop, his eminence, Bitsu'e Abuna Yitzhak, his eminence, Archbishop Yitzhak. So brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, this is just a little overview, right, on the history, you know, the history of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, Ethiopia we Alem Federation, right? We see right here, this is speaking about the EWF, the charter, how it was unveiled, right? And on July 23rd, right? July 23rd, 1939. So the charters, so locals are established from, we say, the established headquarters, right? And shall be in New York. Right, so we of the first unit, you know, put the links in the description as well. But it's just important just to, first of all, sort through this evidence, this information. So we just got a couple of shears right here. Right, we have this. We even have um, um, Mr. Leonard um, C. Howell, you know, Leonard Perceval Howell here. Right, this is the national headquarters. Right? So we have the national headquarters because the organization first was national, right? but then over time increasingly right, became international. You can see this right here. This is some historical you know, data right here. You see what says the national headquarters as presently we are duly elected national president for the first unit right, of the executive committee 2022 as it was in the beginning. Right for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. So a little bit more of the true history, right? Backing it up with um, documentation and evidence. The Ethiopian Tawahedo Church was our primary evidence. Um, the article that we had reprinted in a short book, a small book that we had wrote, you know, or really compiled. Right? It was mainly a compilation. We do annotate and footnote certain things in that particular document, keeping before the public Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan, because he is the one that was sent over here by his Imperial Majesty. So for I and I, he is our Emmanuel. Right? He's that sign, that L, that the power of the Almighty, even Hila, right? Even Kadamari Hila Selassie was with I and I from such a time way back in the 30s. Right, even to such a time right now, right, in spirit and in truth. It's about the spirit of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. And he's an unsung hero. It seems as though more and more brothers and sisters, both here and even in Ethiopia, are seeing the importance, right, of putting Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan in the history and the founding of this organization front and center, 
right? We hear about a lot of other people and no doubt they had some role or work and responsibility and, and do mention, but we have to know the real history in order to put forward to the public the, the real narrative, what's the true narrative of it, you know? Because the truth, you know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, right? Why learn Amharic? More on that. This is the cover of the book right here. This is, this is just for the, the book cover, right? It's a small book. It was a small book. What happens is that we saw that there was no books. There was nothing out there concerning Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. I said, I said, how could that be? You know, there was nothing out there. I mean, we were speaking about many ones were speaking about Rastafari brothers and sisters who had done different things. They were pro-Ethiopia, pro Haile Selassie. Yes, that's good. But many of them really had slight to no real involvement in the Ethiopian World Federation. I mean, the truth be told that some of the mind of mine, you know, really may have not understood the work back then. Right. But that's not even our generation. We're of this generation here. So even if our elders and ancestors made certain mistakes, we should be um, truthful enough to, you know, identify what those mistakes were, right, and seek to correct abuses. In fact, we're going to let go on this right here just as a last part of this. Let's just say this right here. Let's bring this out for a moment. This is going to be the close of this. Constitution and bylaws of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, the aims and objects, right? The name, aims and object, Article 1. The name of this organization shall be the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Again, Section 1. So when Article 1 is the name, aims, and objects, Section 1 says that the name of this organization shall be the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. So if I say Ethiopian World Federation, local this or that, and then say incorporate, is that the organization? That's the name? That's not what was established, right? That is disestablished, right? And that's against what is established. The established name is the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated, or as the constitutional members and I and I say, the EWFI. EWF, Ethiopian World Federation, yes, but speaking of what the Constitution says, Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. Second section, the aims and objects of the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated shall be Section 2A, to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad, and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty of Ethiopia, to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture among its members to correct abuses, relieve oppression, and carve for ourselves and our posterity a destiny comparable with our idea of perfect manhood and God's purpose in creating us, that we may not only save ourselves from annihilation but carve for ourselves a place in the sun. In this endeavor, we determine to seek peace and pursue it, for it is the will of God for man. As we had pointed out to ones, a few ones picking up on that, since we see that many of the ones who were part of the establishment of this organization, we could say were into that same Judeo-Christian and pro-Ethiopia roots. But it's interesting that in that first section, sec section two, um, a, that first subsection of, of section 2, we have seek peace and pursue it in the Psalms, even the Psalms of David, Mesmura Dawit, Psalm 34, we have depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. In the Royal Amharic, it actually reads as seek peace and pursue her, seek peace and pursue her. So just to find that particular word right there even shows more of the our divine heritage, you know, our divine heritage. There's more to the aims and objects, but let's just take that first, you know, section 2A, right, to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty of Ethiopia, to disseminate the ancient Ethiopian culture among its members, to correct abuses, relieve oppression and carve for ourselves and our posterity, 
a destiny comparable with our idea of perfect manhood and God's purpose in creating us that we may not only save ourselves from annihilation but carve for ourselves a place in the sun in this endeavor we determine to seek peace and pursue it for it is the will of God of Ekaziavihir the sustainer for man for humanity there we have Psalm 34 verse 14 so once again Salam to Ethiopian peaceful fraternal greetings Salam to Tena Yistalin may health be given to the I and I and I you know may health be given on I and I behalf may the sustainer give I and I health. Salam. Yes, I.